The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to Worship with Mountain Shadows Presbyterian Church on this Lord's Day, Sunday, April 18th, the third Sunday in the season of Easter Tide. Easter Tide, these 50 days when we are especially mindful that Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. And though we may come to worship this morning, carrying the heavy burdens of our own lives, of those we love and of this world, we come also in joy because we know that there is life and transformation, renewal and hope in Christ Jesus, our risen Lord. This morning's opening prayer is one composed by the great mystic and civil rights activist of the 20th century, Howard Thurman. And I invite you as I offer this prayer to open your hands and let this prayer be for you and for all. Let us pray. Lord, Lord, open unto me. Open unto me light for my darkness. Open unto me courage for my despair. Open unto me hope for my fear. Open unto me peace for my turmoil. Open unto me joy for my sorrow. Open unto me strength for my weakness. Open unto me wisdom for my confusion. Open unto me forgiveness for my sin. Open unto me love for my hates. Open unto me thyself for myself. Lord, Lord, open unto me. Amen. I am Pastor Rachel Srubas, and this morning, the ministry of our director of music, Charmaine Piane Dame, comes to us in recorded form because Charmaine is enjoying some much deserved vacation, and that will be true next Sunday as well. But we'll still have her music and that of our virtual choir and musicians. I'm especially grateful to those of you who sing and to uh, JJ who plays his trombone and Dorothy, her clarinet. Thank you. All of you hand bell ringers. We get to hear you today too. So thank you. God bless you. And I would like you all to be aware of what's happening in ministry this week with Mountain Shadows Church. Tomorrow, Monday, uh, April 19th, we will continue with Brad Monroe's class on Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. The Zoom link for that class has been emailed to the congregation several times. It's a reusable link for each week. It was in the email containing the worship link for this service. So feel welcome to join us at two o'clock tomorrow, Monday, April 19th, as we continue our exploration of First Corinthians. And then on Tuesday, put on your hat for a hats on tea, women and men equally invited at three o'clock until 4.30 for this opportunity to drink some tea together and have a social time of connection and just enjoyment among friends. I would like to invite those who are co-leading worship this day to greet you. Our worship co-leader, Pamela Schultz. Good morning. Good morning to everybody. I am so thrilled to see everybody here today on this beautiful Sunday morning. And Zoom usher and video producer par excellence, Ken McAllister, invite you to greet the people. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you. Indeed, folks, if you haven't done so yet, you might want to take a moment to 
page through the congregation that is gathered on screen. And if you don't have your camera on and it's possible and comfortable for you to turn it on for a moment so that we can see your face and wave to you, we'll be happy to do that. Not a requirement, but it's really a blessing and a good gift to see everybody and to say, good morning, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us continue in our worship of God. Please join me in the responsive call to worship. Consider the extravagant love that God has lavished on us. Christ calls us sons and daughters of God. Yet in the same way the world didn't recognize Jesus, the world does not recognize Jesus' followers either. The full picture of our destiny is not yet clear, but we know this much. When Jesus appears, we will be like him, and we will see him as he is. Amen. Hear the call to confession. All who focus their hopes on Christ seek to understand themselves, their impact on others, and discover their needs for forgiveness, healing, and grace. To the one who restores and renews us, let us pray. God of resurrection and restoration, we come to you in deep need of peace for ourselves, for each other, for a world that often fails to recognize you. Violent events and human cruelty frighten us and make us doubt the gospel. Despite the great good news that Christ is risen, we struggle with disbelief. We wonder whether resurrection makes a, a real difference. Help us, O oh God, by your Holy Spirit, turn our minds and hearts around so we may trust and follow Jesus into the new life he offers. O 
O oh God, transform and renew all who place their faith in you. Change us and revitalize us, we pray, through Jesus, whom you raised from the grave to fulfill your redeeming purposes for us and for all creation. Amen. Take to heart the words of assurance. Jesus came from God to call us away from woundedness and damage, to restore us to spiritual health and holy living in community. Let us accept God's loving assurance. Through Jesus Christ, we are set right with God. We are free to live faithfully following Christ. Alleluia. Amen. reading from the gospel according to Luke. While they were saying these things, Jesus stood among them and said, peace be with you. They were terrified and afraid. They thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you startled? Why are doubts arising in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. It's really me. Touch me and see. For a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones like you see I have. As he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Because they were wondering and questioning in the midst of their happiness, he said to them, do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. Taking it, he ate it in front of them. Jesus said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law from Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Every time Christians gather for worship, the service includes the reading and the proclamation 
of God's word. The scripture is presented and the sermon is preached. But today's proclamation or witness to God's word will be different. The message will be more of a meditation than an explanation, more of an experience than an interpretation. I'm going to reread you the gospel story in the present tense in small sections. And I'm going to invite you to imagine and sense your way through the reading to give you time along the way to engage with it, with your imagination and your senses. Let's begin. First, center yourself comfortably where you are in an easy posture, perhaps open-handed, Feel the good earth beneath you, holding you up. Sense the good gift of gravity, keeping you grounded in this present moment. For the next several minutes, there is nothing that you need to grasp. There is nothing of which you need to be convinced you can simply trust God's spirit to show you glimpses of imagery and insight. Every time you take a breath, you can welcome the spirit to move in your body, in your mind, in your awareness. Notice your breathing now. Let your breathing be natural. Let it be the process of acceptance and release that your breathing naturally is. You may find it helpful to close your eyes lightly. You can close your eyes now if you wish. All that's needed is your gentle agreement to participate in God's word. Silently, but actively. If you do agree to engage with this prayerful meditation on God's story, simply relax into it. Trust that whatever you receive from the gospel story is yours to notice, to enjoy, to learn from, to taste and see. If you find that your mind drifts off or your thoughts wander, don't worry about it. Just nudge your attention gently back to the present moment. Now let's listen to morsels of the gospel story together. While they were saying these things, Jesus himself stands among them and says, peace be with you. At this moment, Jesus stands among us. He was dead, but he is alive and present to us now. He bids us peace. He bids you peace. Notice Jesus' physical appearance. 
Look at his face, his body, his clothing, his demeanor. What do you see? Take in, receive his greeting. Peace be with you. What do these words stir inside of you? Now envision what happens next as I read the next part of the story. They are terrified and afraid. They think they are seeing a ghost. Look at the disciples. See the expressions on their faces. What are they doing with their hands? What do their physical postures express? The disciples' minds reach for some explanation of this risen presence whom they cannot understand or explain. Sense what they may be sensing. Notice how you are responding in your own body. He says to them, why are you startled? Why are doubts arising in your hearts? How do you hear these questions that Jesus, risen and alive before you, asks? Is he puzzled? Is he curious? Does he not understand the disciples' emotions? Is Jesus perhaps inviting you to pay attention to your feelings. Is Jesus welcoming you to notice your own doubts and disbelief without judging those feelings? Again, he speaks. Look at my hands and my feet. It's really me. Touch me and see. For a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones like you see I have. As he says this, he shows them his hands and feet. Jesus is extending his hands toward you. How do his hands look to you? Are they the rough hands of a carpenter? The smooth hands of a teacher? Are his hands wounded? Are they healed? What do you do? Do you reach your hand toward Jesus' hands? Do you shy away 
from touching his hands. Look down and see Jesus lifting up the bottom edge of his garment so you can see his feet. How do his feet look to you? What's happening inside you as you encounter Jesus? Because they are wondering and questioning in the midst of their happiness, Jesus says to them, do you have anything to eat? What do you wonder? What are your questions? What would you like to ask Jesus right now? When Jesus asks you if you have any food to share, how do you respond? They give him a piece of baked fish. Taking it, he eats it right in front of them. Are you the one who hands Jesus a piece of baked fish? Or does another disciple do that? Watch Jesus eating. Pay attention. Listen as he speaks. Jesus says to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law from Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Remember the times you've heard words about Jesus. Remember times you have heard and read in the Bible, the commandments, the stories about Moses, the cries of the prophets, the poetry full of lamentation, but even more full of promises. Here and now, Jesus is standing in front of you. He was crucified, but he is alive. He is showing you his hands and feet. He is asking for food, and he is eating it. He is talking about fulfillment. He is telling you that he is the fulfillment of all those sacred writings from long ago. Can you feel that fulfillment inside of you? Can you sense what it means for the hungering and hurting world to be fulfilled at last. Then Jesus opens their minds to understand the scriptures. Your mind is a window Light is streaming through. Your life is an open door 
Fresh air is breezing in. Possibilities are opening out. Listen to what Jesus says now. This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. You, you are witnessing Christ. He suffered, he rose from the dead. This is not a secondhand story. It's not a rumor, it's not a lie. You are living this experience now. Your heart, your life are changed. Even now, forgiveness is freeing you. Jesus is no ghost. He is the Christ, resurrected and alive before you. For a moment, rest, wakeful and attentive in his presence. From now on, you are the person you have today become. You are Christ's witness. Your mind has been opened. You understand. You belong. You are a beloved member of this community of witnesses. Your sisters in the spirit, your beloved brothers, stand alongside you. You all stand in solidarity with every human being who has suffered, who has been or needs to be transformed. You understand the word of God. It was spoken and written for everyone, for ordinary people like you, and for people who seem quite different from you. Become aware of how it feels to be you right now. You are beloved. You are forgiven for any time and every time you ever got it wrong. You are called. God is calling you now to let your life bear witness to this crucified and risen Christ who fulfills all God's purposes for you and for this hungering and hurting world. You are a witness of all these things. Alleluia. Amen.
Many people say we can't find goodness anywhere. The light of God's face has left us. But God cares for each and every human being. The Lord hears us when we cry out, let us pray. With our gifts, O oh God, we seek to make a precious offering. We hope to help people who struggle. Bless the gifts we give to glorify you, our God. We put our trust in you, who put gladness in our hearts. Amen. What did you carry into worship with you today? Maybe you've set it down, or maybe you've taken up something that you need to take with you. Maybe you have joy in your heart that needs to be shared or concerns we can help you carry in prayer. I would like first to see the hands of those who have concerns, and I'll take down your name and then we'll hear each of those concerns that we might pray with you for God's help. So if there is a concern that you'd like to raise today, raise your hand and I see Jane Rafferty and I'm looking for, I see Steve. Eleanor Geiger's hand. Stevie Cooper. Stevie. And if there's anyone whose camera is off, but who would like to lift up a concern, please uh, go ahead and unmute your microphone or turn on your camera. I see Kathy Moyer's hand. And I will ask Jane Rafferty to please unmute your microphone that we might hear from you. Morning. Um... I am just asking you to pray with me and lift up uh, Reverend Jim Toole, who is in hospice. Um, we ask your blessings on all who love him as he approaches our Savior. Um, likewise, my friend Sue's mother 
is actively dying in uh, Wisconsin. And um, I'm asking you to extend your sympathy and condolences to Reverend Mark Adams at Frontera de Cristo and the death of his father, Billy Meek Adams in uh, South Carolina. Jane, thank you for lifting up the people of our community and yours who need our prayers for their comfort. Indeed, the Reverend Jim Toole was the senior pastor of St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, our neighboring congregation, a wonderful colleague to his clergy friends, and he is receiving hospice care. And knowingly and faithfully approaching his savior, as you say, may your friend Sue's mother know that her savior is near. And may the Reverend Mark Adams, our friend through Frontera de Cristo, be comforted with his family in the death of his father, Billy Meek Adams. Eleanor, I invite you to unmute your microphone and share your concern with the congregation. We cannot still, hear you I'm yet. Still you muted. were unmuted, but then you got muted again. So there you go. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, it's just a real joy to see the wonderful response from the congregation for the many donations uh, that have come for the migrants at the Casa Alitas Welcome Center here in Tucson. Uh, toothbrushes, socks, uh, individual snacks, pampers, small toiletries have all just magically appeared in the donation box at our front door. And they are very gratefully received each Monday morning when I go down to take these donations to the center. Um, if you are used to a shop and ship experience, Amazon has a, a wish list for the needed items that Casa Alitas has requested. And you can shop for men's and women's pants and shoes, especially. Um, shop on Amazon and they will ship them directly to the center uh, where they will be picked up. Uh, the website for that Amazon um, address is in the April article. So um, it's a, an easy way to have a real impact on the lives of people who are passing through Tucson as they move on to an ultimate destination somewhere in the United States where their sponsor lives. So please continue to, to shop and ship. It's, uh, it's much appreciated and much needed. Thanks be to God for those donations of mercy and practical help for migrants passing through our community. Jane, I see your hand. Go ahead and unmute yourself. I want to say that I've corrected the April Oracle article, uh, address for this Amazon link. It is on our Facebook page and it will be in the May uh, Oracle. And uh, Eleanor is going to stop taking donations on Sunday, April 25th. Thank you, Jane. I appreciate the clarification. Stevie, go ahead and unmute your microphone and share your prayer concern with us. I have two concerns. First, uh, just prayers for a lifelong friend who, are de who is dealing with anger issues. Her name is Pamela, and it's, it's, it's concerning. The other is for my father, Everard. Uh, prayers for his health. Um, he was, I won't go into details yet, as we haven't had a full diagnosis, but just for now, just say, please think, keep Everard in your prayers. For your friend, Pamela, and for some easing in her emotional life, and for your father, Everard, and for his health, we will pray to the Lord, Stevie. Kathy Moyer, go ahead and unmute your microphone. Okay. 
just want to lift up prayers. Uh, both concern and joy, I guess I'll say. Concern that Brian Parker will be having surgery tomorrow, but also the joy of knowing that uh, that the Lord will be with him and guiding his compassionate, skillful medical care. So just sending out prayers for, for Brian. Yay. Kathy, thank you for lifting up Brother Brian, brother, we see you smiling and our prayers surround you and God will guide the hands of your surgeon. May the procedure go according to God's will and may you experience healing. At this time, if there are folks who would like to lift up a joy in prayer, raise your hand that I might call on you, feel welcome to raise a hand if there is a word of gratitude that you wish to speak in prayer to our Lord. I see Jeff. Okay, Jeff. And then I also saw Teresa's hand. And if there is anyone else, or if you are not on camera and would like to raise up a joy Unmute your microphone and say, I have a joy. Jeff, go ahead and unmute your microphone. I would just like to give uh, similar thanks as Eleanor for the uh, people who are providing uh, socks, which can be donated outside the door of my home, uh, that are being taken down to Cross Street Mission on a regular basis. Another way that we can continue some of the ministry that we have been doing over the years, uh, even while we're not gathering physically at church. And uh, I welcome those gifts and I thank those who have uh, taken the time to, to bring them over and, and they get down there every week. So thank Jeff, you. thanks be to God for your front door, that open door or open donation box ministry that makes a real difference in the lives of people who spend a lot of their life on their feet for donations of socks. We give thanks to the Lord, and on a future Sunday, perhaps as soon as next week, we'll actually have in our worship service uh, a video of what happens at the Cross Street ministry that our congregation supports and um, that really does serve as a blessing, a tangible blessing in the lives of people experiencing homelessness. Therese, go ahead and unmute your microphone and share your joy I, with us. I'm just real grateful. You know, I'm, I'm single, so I'm disconnected from my family. Thank God for Zoom. But uh, a cousin had written me last night and asked me if I knew who this picture was, and naturally I didn't. And I told her to look on her father's side, not our side. But then her aunt got involved in it. And with me not having any children, I tell you, God has put people in my life that um, respect me as an elder. Now, at 75, I shouldn't be called an elder, but um, most of our my cousins and aunts were so much older than me that I became the elder with uh, uh, many uh, cousins and cousins and cousins. And uh, I'm just really touched um, that God has given me this gift of listening and uh, just being present. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your joy with us, Therese, of family, extended family, to whom you are a beloved elder. I'll take one last quick look around the Zoom room to make sure that I'm not missing anyone who wishes to speak a prayer and not seeing Brian. hands. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, Brian, please go ahead and unmute your microphone. Um, yes, Rachel, I'd just like to um, thank everyone who sent cards or prayers or emails or phone calls, you know, for wishing me well for both my first uh, procedure and my, my surgery tomorrow. And I did receive the good news from my cardiologist nurse that they are going to choose a less invasive option. They're going to know they're already going to do that for tomorrow's surgery. That's encouraging, Brian. And we're so glad that you can feel the love. 
Let us pray. Your love surrounds us, O oh God. We live and move and have our being in your good presence, your life-giving grace. We praise you for being who you are beyond our understanding, and yet you have given us the gift of understanding, the scriptures that bear witness to your creativity, your redemptive power, your lively spirit among us, inspiring our faith and showing us surprises and blessings and possibilities we could not otherwise imagine. How good you are, O oh God. And for any ways and times that we are not able to celebrate with gratitude and humility our place as human beings, we need your forgiveness and we receive it now with thanks. We confess to you our prayers and our needs for ourselves and the ones we care about. We are mindful of migrants, oh God. People whose struggle, whose desperation, whose poverty, whose nearness to violence, not of their own causing, has caused them to seek sanctuary and refuge in this land. And we pray that each and every heart would be made new, changed by compassion to welcome the stranger that that stranger may become who they truly are a beloved sister or brother, your daughter or son, O oh God, for the gifts that people have given to be a tangible blessing to migrants, to citizens experiencing homelessness, we are thankful, O oh God, thankful for simple but powerful offerings of socks and toiletries and snacks, the things that people need to persevere. And we're thankful, oh God, for friends, for family, for the ones with whom we connect, who remind us that we are connected to you, our great creator, redeemer, sanctifier. We pray for the ones who are struggling, who need help, for a friend whose anger has become so hard to manage, for Everard, Stevie's father, and his health, we pray in your mercy, O oh God, to care for him, for those who are receiving hospice care, for the Reverend Jim Toole, who knows he is dying into your arms, O oh God, for Jane's Friend Sue's mother, may she have peace in her own passage. May the Reverend Mark Adams' heart be comforted in his grief and that of his family as they remember Mark's dad, Billy. We know you are the God of everlasting life and who intend for all your ones to have life abundant here and now and the gifts of healing May those gifts be abundant for Brian as he undergoes surgery. We're thankful that it need not be so invasive a procedure. We pray for our friend, the Reverend Steve Meldy and his need for healing. We pray for a nation that is weary, weary of violence, gun violence. We ask you, O oh Lord, in your mercy to help us, help us enact sensible legislation that protects the lives of people. Help us to help 
those who struggle mightily with mental illness that they not be led to violence. You are beautiful and good, O oh God. You are the giver of resurrection and life. And we are witnesses of all these things in Christ, who taught us when his disciples pray to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now go on into your day, into your life in peace and let your life bear witness to the Christ who is risen, who is risen indeed. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit dwell and abide with us all. Together, let God's people unmute your microphones and say amen. 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 Thank you all for gathering for worship until we meet again. Fair enough. Peace. <laughs>